in this video today we're going to create spike that's going to uh, damage the player and we're going to be able to with one scene either toggle uh, the fact that it is animated or not by creating a little state machine into those spikes so let's get started so now we're gonna create a way to damage our player. So I have uh, taken the sprite that I have in my Metroid uh, Vanya sprite sheet and I made it as a sort of animated uh, spike that we're gonna use for uh, creating uh, something to damage our player. This will be um, into the new version of the asset that I'm gonna upload today. So like this, you will have it. Uh, so here, I, I think I already have put it in my stuff so yes by a spike spreadsheet right here so now what we need to do is we need to create that so i'm going to create a new scene and that new scene going to be an area 2d so i'm going to click here on the plus and i'm going to take a look at my area 2d that area 2d i'm going to rename it spike uh, i'm going to have a sprite 2d attached to it i'm going to have a collision shape obviously i'm going to have also an animation player player and i think it's gonna be it. that animation player i'm gonna rename it anim the collision shape here i'm gonna rename it um it box it box collision something like this i'm gonna attach um i think a new rectangle that's gonna be good and the sprite 2d i'm gonna uh, take a look at my sprite folder interactable and i'm gonna put my sprite sheet into empty so now I have, so it's by three, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm going to go to animation and I'm going to put it at seven. I'm going to have two, uh, two animation. The first one going to be uh, active. And then the second one going to be uh, unactive. Unactive. And I'm going to have a third one that's going to be animated. Active, and it's going to be active like this, animated. Uh, so I'm going to go first to active, I'm going to go to my sprite 2D and I'm going to key the frame right here. So I'm going to key this one, frame 0, I'm not going to create a reset track, I'm going to create it and I'm going to leave it like this. Uh, then I'm going to go to unactive and for this one I'm going to go still on my sprite 2D, I'm going to go at the end of it, here, on this one, the 6, and I'm going to key this one and then I'm going to uh, create my active animated. So here I'm going to give a bit of space, so I'm going to put something like 2.5, I think that will be enough. Um, and I'm going to go back to my uh, sprite 2D here, so here I'm going to go to my 6 uh, frame. I'm going to key that. I'm going to just make a little bit of space for me so I can see better what I'm doing. I'm going to go here to like, I think, dot seven. And basically what I'm going to do is like, I'm just going to come here and I'm going to go in reverse. Five, four, three, like this. I think if I go here, two, yes. I'm gonna leave it like this. I'm gonna put it back to around 1.8. I'm gonna key that. And then here, I'm gonna just go back to normal, like this. Voila. So now I'm gonna put it on loop and let's see. Okay, that works fine. So here I can just come here and I can put it back on six like this. So now I have my animation. Boom, boom. Okay, that works. So now what I need to do is I need to take care of the uh, hitbox collision. So for that, I need to go back to my active. And here, uh, first, I'm going to just reshape it. So I'm going to put it like this. Uh, like this, like this. I'm gonna just toggle off the grid snap. I'm just gonna keep the um, the smart snapping here. So like this is gonna smart. It's gonna snap to the pixel right there. I'm gonna key the fact that it is uh, enabled per default. Like this. I'm gonna go on unactive, and here I'm gonna toggle the fact it is unactive per default. And I'm gonna go to active animated. At the beginning, it will be unactive, and then around. Here, it's going to be active. So here, I'm going to just tick off. I'm going to come here. Make sure that it is toggle here. And then here, it is not. Up to the end. Like this. No. Uh, up like this and like this. Voila. So now, let's see. Voila. 
So now everything is good. So now what we can do is we can uh, go to the spike, click on the plus, so click on the uh, script icon here, and we're gonna create uh, a script. That script I'm gonna call it um, damage zone, damage zone, because that's something that we're gonna reuse in different uh, in different uh, uh, object. So I'm gonna click here on the folder and I'm gonna put it into my uh, interactable folder. I'm gonna save it here. I'm gonna click on create. And so here what I want to do is like, I want to erase that, I don't need it. What I want to do is here, I want to uh, connect my inbox collision, my spike collision to my script. So for that, I need to go click on spike. I need to go here on node. And here I'm gonna look for body entered. Body entered 2D, which is gonna be my player. I'm gonna click on connect and it's gonna create that function. Here what I can do is like, I can say if body dot name is double equal to player, then I can uh, say to uh, to Godot, okay, do something. So for example, here what we're gonna do is like we're gonna uh, go to our player data dot live and we're gonna do it minus equal one, something like this. I can save my spike scene. I'm gonna save it here into interactable. Save it here. And now what I want to do is I just want to make sure that my uh, my player can collide with the spike. So for that I need to go back to the inspector. I need to go to collision and here I am on uh, player one. I don't need that. So my player is on what? I need to go back to my player and my player here can collide with one and five. Okay, so I need to put my spike on five right here. Or I can even create another uh, another uh, thing. I'm going to put it on six. And actually I'm going to go back to my player and I'm going to put it also on six on the mask here. I'm going to go to my project, project setting. I'm gonna go to my 2D physics and here I'm gonna call it uh, damage damage zone something like this uh, and so like this now I have a name for my uh, for my uh, my collision layer and I, I can go back to my spike here I can put it on damage zone and it can collide with the player so now with that done I can go back to my level one for example and I can put my uh, my object somewhere, so I can go to my level one here, click on it, click on the chain icon, I can take my spike and I can put it for example right here, and I can put my spike right there. The thing is, we don't have a default um, a default scene yet, a default animation yet for our spike, so right now if I play the spike, for example, it's just like this, so it's not going to do uh, anything specifically. Uh, I just need to go back to my spike and do something. I just need to go to my anim and make sure that on unactive it is toggle off per default, the collision layer, so that's good. So uh, basically here I'm just going to do visible debug, visible collision shape. I'm going to launch my game and let's see. You can see that my, uh, my collision shape here is enabled, so it's not what I want. So here what I need to do is I need to go to my anim and for example, I can put that to active and here I can put on auto load and it's going to display that animation per default. Let's have a look. Voila, now we can see our stop. And if I come here, it's going to remove one life to my player. I come here and that's it. Voila. But right now I can't kill the player. But at this, we're going to do that in the next video. We're not going to do that in this one. Now what I want to do is I want to just make sure that, for example, if my animation player here is set on unactive here i can for example have my collision shape disabled right here so i just want to make sure that this is working so that's the case so that's perfect so now what we need to do is uh the way the reason why i've created those animation here is because uh maybe you want to have uh, uh um, in one object in, in our spike scene you want to have the possibility to toggle which type of uh, spike you want maybe you, there is like some uh, some level where you want the spike to be just this one it doesn't move it's just there and that's it and maybe there is some level where you want to have your spike to be active um to be like this one for example uh, and if it's the case what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing that we have done on the uh, camera we're going to create a state machine so here i'm going to click on my spike and here i'm going to create an enum it's going to be a uh, first first i'm going to create an export variable that i'm going to call it spike uh, spike state and then here i'm going to create an enumerator that i'm going to call uh, actually spike state and this one i'm going to call it current state voila that's going to be making way more sense so here i'm going to do it like this i'm going to have uh, 
one is going to be called active and one is going to be called animated like this and so now my export um, my export var current state i can just put two colon like this and i can call my spike state in it so now uh, if i go back to my spike here i can choose which one i want and so for example here uh, for my spike i want it to be on active animated so i can save it like this uh, and here I can, for example, go back to my level one. I can click on my spike. You can see here it is inactive. Uh, but maybe I want to have uh, another one that's going to be on animated. And so what I can do now is like, for example, I can copy this one. And this one I can copy it, for example, I can put it right here, for example, like that. And now what I can do is like in my spike, I can code the logic. So here I just need to come here. I need to call my process delta function and I need to make a match statement to match the current state of my actual spike. And here I can say if spike state is an active, then we can toggle a function that is called active that doesn't exist yet. We're going to create it. And if it's spike underscore state dot animated, we're going to also do active but this time animated animated and now we're gonna create th those two uh, those uh, two uh, function so here what i'm gonna do is like i'm gonna come here i'm gonna first create the active function and then here i'm gonna create the active animated like this and then i'm gonna pass so now what we want to do is here, we just want to toggle the right animation. So here, for example, I'm going to say dollar sign anim.play going to be equal to active. And here on active animated, I'm going to say that dollar sign anim.play is equal to active underscore animated. And if I haven't made any typo, normally everything looks all right. Okay, that's good. So now, with that done, if I go back to my level 1, my first spike here is on active, and my second spike here is on animated. And so now this one's going to be animated, and this one's not going to be. The only thing that we need to do here is on spike, we need to go back and make sure that we have toggled the loop action on the active animated, which is the case. So now if I launch back the game, this one is animated, this one is not and so like this we have in one spike scene we have two different type of spike that we can import into our game which is good and so for example i can come back to my level one here and my spike one like this i can for example maybe put it here at the top as well and so for example for that i can go back to transform i can uh, unchain the uh, the scale here and on the y i can put it at minus one so like this it's gonna uh, flip it and so this one for example now i can put it maybe maybe here like this and i can make a range of it and stuff that this uh, this is up to you i'm just showing you how to do some stuff and i can create another one and this one i'm gonna put it for example i'm gonna reput the transform at one so this is like that and so now we have like different uh different spike that are like uh, giving some some um, some damage to our player so here i can get damage and here for example i'm going to show you here i don't get damage here i'm getting damage and now i have no life which is like for now our player is not killed by the fact that we don't have any life anymore and that's what we're going to do in the next video but yeah that's what what i was looking to show you now we have those two spikes that gives a more flexible uh, workflow for our game so that's cool so that's it for me for this video. I'm going to see you in the next one. So that's it for me. I hope this video has been helpful for you. If it's the case, don't hesitate to give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Me, I want to thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.